As you know, I left Phillips University for several reasons, but the biggest one was maybe money and the fact that my family is growing and I needed money. But I also left to go to Jefferson County, Colorado, Jeffco as we all called it later, because it was reputed to be one of the very best school districts in America. And I liked the idea of joining one of the best school districts in America. Well, you know, when you get there and you become part of it, you find out that maybe school districts, I don't care how big and how good they are, are kind of like human beings. You know, the good book says that we all fall short of the glory of God, that we're all sinners, etc. Well, yes, I'd seen a lot of things, probably most of them brought into the Phillips University area by Dr. Romine as he came to recruit people to go out and join Jeff Cole as teachers. So, you know, I knew I was going to one of the best. But when you get there, you find out that it's like any place else. There are problems. Maybe one of the cutest illustrations of some of the public relations problems that even a big, successful district has in its home area was when I met Joe Perito. He came up to the Evergreen Junior music supervisor. And he's a very personable person. We got to visit him a little bit. And I don't think I brought it up. I think he said, look at my car out there. Really beat up old Ford. Yeah, I said, you know what? I've got a brand new Cadillac. But he said last year, Dr. Johnson told me not to drive that thing out around the district and go to the schools in it. They'd think we were paying... Supervisors too much money, and if we paid supervisors too much, we probably paid teachers too much. So he said, I bought the old Ford, and I've gotten to have it. I keep the good one at home in the garage. Interesting. Well, not interesting, sad, was the fact that our Randy was going to kindergarten the year we got to Jeffco while I was an elementary principal. He went to another area elementary school. Guess who his kindergarten teacher was? Don't remember the names better than I don't. A failed junior high art teacher that they should have non-renewed. I don't care what her tenure status was. If she couldn't teach art, she shouldn't be kept in the district if she was hired as an art teacher. And to put her in charge of little kids, a kindergarten teacher? She was terrible. Absolutely a, a disgrace. But, you know, the teachers are hard to remove once you get them on tenure. Well, that was bad enough. And as a first grader, he, we were up in uh, Evergreen and at uh, Wilmot School under the wonderful Riley Scott. He had a teacher with a lisp. And boy, that, after the kindergarten word, his mother and me, and we checked in on that. And Riley said, yes, she is. She has a lisp, and she does have an extreme southern drawl, but she's a great teacher, and she was. So, again, there was a case where the first impression was misleading. But in the second grade, he drew a teacher that was going through menopause. I bet she missed almost two out of every five days, and substitutes so often that some people refuse to sub, because even in the second grade, you don't have a regular teacher in there day after day, Kids get out of hand. Then his third or fourth grade teacher was a man that I think was gay. And I don't care whether he's gay or straight. But it kind of bothers you when he takes his knitting to school and knits in the classroom. And when you go to back to school night and he's got science spelled wrong. Huh. So I guess what I'm saying is, that, yeah, big, perfect. No. Big? Yes. Perfect? No. Good? Yes. Good all the time? No. Well, then here I am principal at the Evergreen Junior High, and uh, they send me a failed, well, a Judas, a teacher that down in one of the Wheat Red schools led some sort of a undermining Judas campaign against somebody in the administration or in the school 
local school building. So they ship him up to Evergreen and tell me, you know, keep an eye on this guy. Well, you know, you keep an eye on him, all right, but he knows that, does really well. Talented teacher, Dennis somebody or other. Well, his Judas characteristics, his ability to be critical, and being in that same carpool is probably, he was probably the catalyst that caused that counselor administrator that I had to get rid of because she was a Judas, he probably led her into the Judas role. In fact, when she begged me to reconsider, she said, you know, we just got into the habit of can you top this and saying negative things about you, the principal. Not good. They should have fired the man. They should have never sent him up to Evergreen. Well, then they got the bright idea, and I expect maybe this was a national thing, because I also ran into it later in other school districts, that if you have a teacher that's not making it, you're supposed to draw up an improvement plan Give it to them, they sign it, you sign it. Yeah, there's a little trick to that. Then if they make a little improvement, you are sort of obligated to not go ahead and non-renew them. And that silly plan caused me to put two teachers on tenure at Evergreen Junior that should have never had a second contract. This idea that Bush has, with his no child left behind, that if you put enough pressure on the local school board, on the local superintendent, the principal, the teacher, and the kids, that everybody can learn, and master, uh-uh, you can't even do it when they're cheating now and really teaching the test. Oh, no, they don't teach the test. They teach the standards, and the standards are what you test, and they still can't get them up because some kids have a mental set or enough problems in their background or enough IQ problems or whatever. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I know it's an old saying, but it's true. So even the best of school districts has lots of problems.